Hello everyone. First, I would like to extend my gratitude to APSO for allowing me the honor of being a part of this webinar series. I'm Dr. Nam Jung Baek, a professor at Seoul National University College of Medicine and Seoul National University Bundang Hospital. The focus of my presentation today is robot assisted rehabilitation. Robots can be classified into exoskeleton type or end effector type depending on the terminal device. Locomat for low limb and Amio power for upper limb are exoskeleton type and GU system for low limb and in motion for upper limb are end effector type. For ambulatory robot, Restore, which is soft exosuit, has been FDA approval for stroke gait training. Typically, these devices got FDA approval as a class 2 medical device. These are the advantages of robotic assisted rehabilitation. It provides high-intensity, repetitive, task-oriented, and task-specific training. It provides high precision and endurance. It can be standardized, and it motivates patients using training context. It provides real-time feedback, and it can be adjustable, and it can provide objective measures and it can be adapted to all levels of ability. Sometimes it may be cost effective depending on the reimbursement system. In our study, we conducted a multicenter trial to demonstrate the performance of the ExoWalk, an exoskeleton type gait trainer designed to replicate certain dynamic mobility functions. We randomly assigned a group of 144 stroke patients into two categories, a control group receiving conventional physical therapy assisted gait training, and an experimental group undergoing electromechanical gait training. Both forms of gait training were administered for 30 minutes daily, five days a week over a span of four weeks. We conducted assessment both at baseline and at the conclusion of the four-week period. Our finding indicated that electromechanical assisted gait training proved to be equally effective as the traditional gait training method. Notably, the outcomes in both groups demonstrated a high degree of comparability. In our subgroup analysis of stroke duration of 90 days, the subacute group displayed notable improvements in clinical working function when compared to chronic group. In a recent Cochrane review, it was shown that people who received electromechanical assisted gait training in combination with physiotherapy after stroke are more likely to achieve independent walking than people who receive gait training without these devices. People in the first three months after stroke and those who are not able to walk seem to be benefit most from this type of intervention. However, the role of the type of device is still not clear. Based on our current understanding grounded in evidence-based research, we can identify optimal candidates for robot-assisted gait training. These candidates include individuals falling into two categories. Number one, individuals unable to walk. Those who fall under functional ambulation category 0 or 1 signifying a complete lack of independent ambulation capability or a minimal ability to work with the system are excellent candidates. Number 2. It is important to emphasize the relevance of timing. 
the ideal window for such intervention typically lies within the initial three months following a stroke, during which patients may experience substantial gains in their rehab journey through the use of these robotic systems. In 2010, a significant multicenter randomized control trial conducted by Low et al. delved into the realm of robot-assisted upper-arm therapeutic training. The patients were assigned to one of three groups, intensive robot-assisted therapy, intensive comparison therapy, or usual care. It was observed that at the 12-week mark, Robot-assisted therapy did not yield a significant improvement in motor function compared to either usual care or intensive therapy. Another study conducted in Switzerland and more recent RATL study, all the study results were negative, meaning that robot-assisted training failed to demonstrate a significant improvement in upper limb function after stroke in comparison to usual care. In a recent Cochrane review, the efficacy of electromechanical assisted arm training when coupled with physiotherapy in stroke patients was analyzed. The findings showed that individuals who underwent electromechanical and robot assisted arm training post stroke exhibited promising enhancement in their daily activity of living, arm function, and arm muscle strength. However, a subsequent publication emerged two years later. They arrived at the conclusion that the outcome achieved through robotic-assisted arm training were comparable with those achieved through conventional therapy. Moreover, when indirect comparisons were made between various types of robotic devices, there was no apparent differences in their effectiveness. A soft wearable robot, often referred to as a soft exosuit or soft exoskeleton, is a type of wearable robotic device designed to augment and assist the human movement. Unlike traditional rigid exoskeletons, which typically use rigid frames and joints, soft wearable robots incorporate flexible materials and soft components such as textiles and fabric-based actuators. Soft wearable robots are typically lightweight and more comfortable to wear than their rigid counterparts. They are designed to be worn like clothing or attached to a specific body parts such as the legs and arms. These devices use sensors and actuators to detect and enhance wearer's movement. One of the key advantages of soft wearable robots is their adaptability and versatility. We developed a soft wearable robot ankle foot orthosis for post-stroke patient. The ankle brace was fabricated using a 3D printer. Using Velcro straps, easy donning and doffing was possible. Bidirectional tendon-driven actuation module was applied. This shows wearable gait sensing modules. It measures the patient's lower limb motions at foot ground context and integrated with the actuation module and the real time control system. The gait phase of patient is detected in real time based on measured foot ground contact information and the gait motion of practic side of the sagittal plane. This is the video of male, 49 years old, left hemiplegic stroke patient walking without AFO. As you see, there is a foot drop and dragging of the left side. When patient wear a soft AFO and with orthosis actuated, 
food drop was corrected and also appropriate plantar flexion was achieved at the proper moment during the gait cycle. This is a wearable hip assistant robot developed by Samsung Advanced Institute of Technology known as the GEMS, Gate Enhancing and Motivating System. This device has the capacity to deliver supportive torque and power precisely around the bilateral hip joint, effectively assisting with both hip extension and flexion during walking. In a randomized controlled trials involving 26 stroke patients, GEMS enhanced the gait parameters and reduced the energy cost. This is an example of arm and hand orthosis designed to help restore function to the patient's paralyzed or weakened upper extremity, helping individuals perform actions and daily activities of living that might otherwise be impossible. This device detects the myelectrical signal from the patient's surface of the skin, then activating actuators to move the limb as the user intends. In theory, this process has the potential to contribute to motor recovery through muscle re-education. By continuously engaging and exercising the musculature, the device aids in retraining the neural pathways and promoting the recovery of motor function. Furthermore, the advancement of brain-computer interface controlled exoskeleton holds the promise of groundbreaking treatment approaches for neural rehab following a stroke, especially for patients with severe paralysis. Evidence has indicated that with regular and repetitive use over the course of several weeks, brain-computer interface controlled robots have the potential to trigger motor recovery even in cases of chronic paralysis. This marks a significant leap in our understanding of neural rehab and the remarkable potential of technology to bring about positive change. Recent development in lightweight robotic actuators, the creation of comfortable and portable real-world brain recording solutions, and the establishment of reliable brain control strategies have collectively cleared the path for brain-computer interface controlled soft robots to enter the realm of clinical care. These BCI-controlled soft robots have now reached a state of technical readiness and they may play a pivotal role in enhancing the effectiveness of personalized, personalized treatment strategies. I'm pleased to introduce to you a system currently under development through our collaboration with Charité University in Berlin. This pioneering innovation takes the form of a soft robotic hand orthosis that is controlled by EEG signals. As demonstrated in the videos, with the assistance of this BCI controlled soft robot, individuals are now capable of engaging in bimanual activities of daily living tasks that were previously beyond their reach. We postulate that this form of training, harnessing the power of brain-computer interface, has the potential to induce substantial brain plasticity and force a greater improvement in motor function compared to training without the BCI component. This hypothesis opens up a promising tool for enhancing the effectiveness of neural rehabilitation potentially leading to more profound and lasting outcomes for our patient. This is end of my presentation. Thank you for your kind attention.